Today we're going to look at how to write a single replacement reaction. In a single replacement reaction, you um, on your reactant side or your left hand side, you will see a single element, like in these examples, there's a single element, and they are all reacting with a compound, and that compound's typically in an aqueous solution. So a single element plus a compound. In this situation, the single element may or may not change places with one of the elements in the compound. We need to figure out if these will react. So if I look at the single element, I just want you to take a notice that sometimes the single element, like in number one, is just Zn, um, and sometimes the single element might have a subscript, like I2. When you are writing single replacement reactions and you're writing an element by itself, you need to make sure you keep in mind the elements that are diatomic. I remember it as Hofbrinkel. H, O, F, B, R, I, N, and C, L. Whenever these are by themselves and only when they are by themselves as single elements, do we have to write them with a subscript of two. You can remember it as Hofbrinkel or on the periodic table. They kind of make a seven on the periodic table, starting at nitrogen down to iodine and remembering that hydrogen is also one of them. There are seven total um, that um, are diatomic in nature but I like to remember it as Hofbrinkel. So that's why sometimes you'll see a subscript of two and sometimes you won't. And when you have to write them yourself, you have to know this information. Um, if you look at eight, nine, um, you'll also notice that sometimes I write the single element second, and that's totally fine. Um, you, it doesn't matter if the single element comes first or second as your reactant, as long as it's an element reacting with a compound. It's a single replacement reaction. So how do I know if these single replacement reactions occur? I have to check what's called the activity series. The activity series in my grade level chem class will be using table J. Um, depending on your class, you might have a different table to check or um, it might be something you have to memorize. But the reference table would look something like this, where you have the most active um, metals or nonmetals at the top, and you have the least active nonmetals at the bottom. In order for there to be a reaction, the single element, the element that appears by itself, has to be higher than the element that's in a compound in the reaction. So let's look at an example and learn how to kind of use this table as well. So I'm gonna take a moment, and I know these are small, so I'm gonna take a moment and just rewrite um, the first reaction, Zn PbCl2. So what you do first is you look up the single element, the one that's by itself, um, and you find that on your activity series. So here's my activity series, and I find Zn, the element that was by itself. Notice it's on the metal side, which makes sense because Zn is a metal. If I just um, take a moment, the only non-metal that's on the metal side is H2, and it makes sense because H forms a positive ion um, when it's in solution or when it's in a compound, and that's similar to the metals. So um, even though the left side says metals, there is hydrogen on the left-hand side here. So we find our single element. Now if I go back to my problem, I want to compare my single element to the part of the compound that's on the same side of that table. So here I have PB and CL. Let's think about what element I'm comparing Zn to. I notice that PB is on the same side of the table, so I can compare the activity of the two metals. Notice that Cl is on the other side of the table. I never wanna compare two things in different columns. So I'm gonna be comparing Zn to Pb. In order for there to be a single replacement reaction, the element that's by itself, the single element has to be higher or more active than the one in the compound. So will this react? Yes, this will react. Zn, the single element, is higher than Pb. So essentially, now what you're going to do is the two things that you just compared in table J are going to switch places. That's why it's called a single replacement. 
they are switching places. They are not combining together, but switching places. Meaning that PV was once in a compound, and now it's going to be by itself. Whenever I write an element by itself, I need to ask myself, is it diatomic? So is PB diatomic? No, it's not one of those elements up here that I am memorizing. It's not one of Hofbrinkle. So when I write PB by itself, I will just write it as PB. So there I'll write it as PB, okay? ZN was by itself, and now it's going to be in a compound. It's going to be combining with CL. When I am making a new compound, this is a new ionic compound, metal and nonmetal. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to refine the formula. Um, it might not be um, the same as the formula on the left-hand side. I get PBCl2 on the left side. It may be different. It may be a similar kind of formula, but I have to find it. So somewhere on the side of your paper, you should be doing a little bit of work where you've got to look up the charges, switch them, and make them subscripts. So if I look up Zn, okay, Zn has a 2 plus charge. And if I look up Cl, which is a halogen, it's in group 17, it has a 1 minus charge. So when I switch them, um, I get Zn Cl2. And if you're having trouble getting ionic formulas, you might want to check out my video on how to write ionic formulas. So this is the formula that I have to write in as my second product. What's great about this is since this is my product, um, my reaction is now already balanced. There's two CLs on either side, one PB and one ZN. So I have successfully written a single replacement reaction. Let's look at number three. I'm going to take a moment to rewrite it. So going through this quickly, AL is my single element. I will first find that on my reference table. So here's Al on my metal side. If I go back to my reaction, I've got to figure out what I'm comparing it to. Am I comparing it to Fe or O? I should be comparing it to Fe because that's the part of the compound that's in the same column on table J. Here's table J and here's Fe. Is the single element higher? Yes, Al is more active than Fe. So essentially, it's going to take its place in the compound. So all I'm doing now is I'm switching places of the two things that I compared from the reference table. They don't combine with each other, but they switch places. Al was by itself. Now it's switched with Fe, so Fe is by itself. How do I write Fe by itself? Well, it's not one of my Hofbrinkel, it's not one of my diatomic ones, so I'll just write Fe. Now Al was by itself, but it's combining with oxygen. I can't just write Alo. I'm not sure what ratio they're going to have until I look up their charges. So I can't just do that. I've got to somewhere on the side or in my head look up and see that Al has a 3 plus charge, oxygen has a 2 minus charge, and when I flip them, I get Al2O3. That's the formula that I'm going to be putting into my, um, my reaction here. Now, don't worry about the fact that um, there's one O on the left and three O's on the right. We're going to take care of that right now with balancing, and we're going to take care of that with coefficients. So I have three oxygens. I need three oxygens here. Now I have three irons. I need three irons here. And I have two aluminums on the right. I need two aluminums on the left. So any discrepancies and subscripts we'll take care of later. But again, just notice that when I'm making my new compound, I am looking up charges and flipping them. I'm not thinking about whether something's diatomic or not. The only time I consider that is if I have an element by itself. Let's take a moment and look at number 12, and I'll rewrite it here for you. Cu reacting with HNO3, which is nitric acid. So I'm going to find the single element on my reference table, J, Cu, and I'm going to compare it to the part of the compound that falls in the same column, which actually happens to be H. If I look at it here, here's, here's Cu, and I'm comparing it to H, which falls in the same column. Don't worry about the fact that it says H2. It's reminding you it's diatomic. Is the single element Cu higher than the element that's in the compound? 
No, it's not. So this one will not react. So these will not switch places. There is no reaction to write. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at number six, and I'm going to rewrite it. F2 fluorine reacting with LIBR. So again, same rules apply. I'm going to look up my single element first, and I'm going to compare it to the part of the, co the compound that's in the same column. So if I go to my reference sheet, here's the fluorine, the element by itself. And if I notice, the Li is in a different column, so I'm not comparing it to the Li. I'm comparing it to the Br2 because that's in the same column. Don't worry about the fact that it says 2 right now because that's the subscript it would have if it were by itself. If it's in a compound, it can have any subscript based on what the charge is that needs to be equalized. So will this react? Yes, the single element F2 is higher than the one in the compound. So the two things I just compared will switch places. F2 or F used to be by itself, now it's in the compound. BR was in the compound and now it's by itself. How do I write BR when it's by itself? Well, hey, wait a minute, it's one of my diatomic elements. When I write it by itself, it has to have a subscript of two. This only applies to when it's by itself and not when it's in a compound. Okay, F was in a compound, but now it was by itself, now it's in a compound. Somewhere on the side of my work, I'm creating an ionic compound, so I need to look up the charges, switch them, and make it sub them subscripts. So if I look up Li, Li has a charge of 1 plus. If I look up fluorine, fluorine has a charge of 1 minus. And when I switch, I do get the formula LiF. Make sure that when you're writing your ionic formula that you put your positive ion or your metal first and you put your negative ion or your non-metal second. So I shouldn't see any FLIs. It should be positive then negative. And similarly, you never want to combine two things that are positive or two things that are negative. Um, so I would never combine fluorine and bromine in this scenario because they are both negatives and I'm creating an ionic compound here. Okay, now my last step is just to balance everything. I've got two Fs on the left, so I need two on the right. I've got two Brs on the right, I need two on the left, and that balances lithium as well. So this is how you write single replacement reactions. Again, as a heads up, if you look at like number eight and nine, sometimes you can always put the compound first and then the element, that's totally fine. And if you look at like 13, 15, six through 16, um, instead of writing these with um, symbols to start with. You can write them in words to start with. So like 13 says chlorine reacts with aluminum bromide. Chlorine is Cl2 because it's an L, it's one of the diatomic elements and it's by itself. Aluminum bromine, bromide. Okay, I look up aluminum, it's three plus. Bromine is one, uh, one minus, so I get AlBr3 as my other reactant. Um, and then I write an arrow and then I'm starting in the same place as the ones we've just looked at.